Hey, Richard Knudsen here again. You know, for a long time, I wanted to record an overview of an instructor-led training class I wrote and deliver on a regular basis. I call it Customizing Dynamic CRM on the XRM platform. And finally, on this beautiful spring Sunday afternoon here in the Midwest, I've freed up some dedicated time in my mobile recording studios so that I can do just that. So let me start with some background. Dynamic CRM ships with lots of great built-in functionality in three broad functional areas. Salesforce automation, marketing, and service management. And if you stick fairly closely to the baseline feature set, you can get up and running pretty quickly. But it's also a great platform for customization. And in this live online one-day class, I'll show you how to use its customization tool set to implement the functions and processes that make your organization unique. And not only can you use the techniques I'll show you to customize the built-in sales, marketing, and service functionality, you can also use them to create entirely custom applications in virtually any line of business or application. And that's the sense in which people refer to Dynamic CRM as the XRM platform. And a solid grasp of the techniques for doing this, as well as an appreciation for its potential, are both really important takeaways from this class. So that's a pretty high level overview, but now let me provide some of the details on specifically what you'll learn in the now class. The class consists of six parts, roughly 50 minutes apiece. And in part one, I start out by explaining the dynamic CRM architecture, and in particular, why it works so well as a customization platform. Customizations you'll learn about in this class are often referred to as schema. Customization. Now, when you're performing schema customizations, you use the tools provided in the native web client for Dynamic CRM. And the customizations you make are stored as metadata in the underlying SQL database for your Dynamic CRM organization. So in part one, you'll get an appreciation for the most important advantages of this approach, and I'll show you how to use them. For example, customizations you make in one Dynamic CRM organization can be exported and then import it into another organization. I'll show you how this lets you reuse customizations in different contexts and how you might use it to, say, promote customizations from a development or a test environment to a production. Then, in part two, I'll show you how to customize dynamic CRM forms and views. So, using familiar record types like accounts, contacts, and opportunities, I'll show you how to add and drop fields from their forms, how to rearrange the forms, more efficient user experience, and I'll show you what, in my experience, are some of the most useful and most commonly requested form customizations. Then, in part three, I want to make sure you understand and know how to customize dynamic CRM entities and attributes. So, what are these things? Well, an attribute, in the form context, is usually thought of as a field in the context of a list or a grid, typically thought of as a column. But dynamic CRM terms, it's really the unit of which data is stored. So then, what's an entity? Well, you might think of an entity as a table being made up of a collection of all the columns or attributes. But in fact, it's a lot more than that. In addition to its collection of fields or attributes, which information is stored, a dynamic CRM entity, say account, for example, consists of the customizable form that users interact with, updating data at the record level. It includes the collection of views that we covered in part two, and it includes the collection of relationships that determine how an entity like account interacts with other entities in dynamic CRM, such as contact, opportunity, and custom entities that we can create as customizers. So in part three, I'm going to show you how to customize the existing attributes of so-called system entities like account, contact, lead, opportunity, and case. And then I'll show you how to add custom entities to Dynamic CRM. So in addition to the how-to, I want you to take away a solid understanding of how your business requirements really should drive your decisions on issues like whether or not to customize existing entities or to create your own custom entities. Then in part four, you'll learn about a super important topic, which is how to create and customize relationships between Dynamic CRM. And now, since I realize that might sound like a lot of jargon, let me 
give you a couple of examples of the business benefit you can realize if you understand the things that I want to teach you in this part. First, if you've ever reassigned an account record and then realized, maybe too late, that every single child record also got reassigned regardless of its status or when it was created, well, you might be happy to know that uh, fixing that is an easy customization of the account entity's one-to-many relationships, and I'll show you how to do that. Then in part four, we'll start to get into some XRM scenarios. For example, event management isn't something that's built into dynamic CRM out of the box, so we'll create custom entities for events and registrations, and the relationships that we'll create between those and say between system entities like contacts. We'll start to get you thinking about how you can use these techniques to model your own specific business requirements. This is part five. If you remember earlier, I said that for the most part, these schema customizations take a no-code approach to customization. And form scripting, we'll cover in part five, this is the exception to that. Now with form scripting, you write JavaScript code and put it behind events on a dynamic CRM form. It's good for things like setting default values when a form loads, validating data entry when a form is saved, or maybe dynamically updating a form's appearance when a value in a field changes. So in part five, I'll give you an introduction to form scripting and really show you some of its sweet spot scenarios, showing or hiding form fields or sections based on a user's selection in a pick list, for example. Maybe using dynamic iframes to mash up information from web pages like Google Maps or LinkedIn contacts based on values on an account or a contact form. Now, you can do a lot more with form scripting than we could possibly cover in an hour. So a big part of what we'll cover is where to go for more information. Starting with the dynamic CRM for SDK, which is tons of excellent sample code that you can use for ongoing learning or even in your own applications. Which brings me to part six, XRM in one hour. So what I do here in part six is demonstrate the pretty amazing things you can accomplish with the XRM platform by building a functional application start to finish using design specifications supplied by an attendee. We call this our XRM app of the month and I think you'll find it A, very instructive, B, somewhat entertaining, and that C, you'll be glad you have access to the recordings post-event because what I do here is put together all the techniques we've covered throughout the rest of the day and show you how they all fit together to build a real-world app. And I move pretty fast in the process. Each month, I can only do one XRM application, so make sure you register early and discuss your design specs with me, and you just might be our XRM app of the month. And after all, who wouldn't want that?